Hey folks, Josephine Sabori here, and I'm reviewing a movie review this week, and it's yet another film that stars Bill Cosby after his last film that I just reviewed called Leonard Part 6, which happens to be his worst movie of all time. stars in another comedy, which surprisingly enough was critically panned by critics, and they also dubbed this as the worst movie of 1990. But to be fair, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. But it's getting there. It's called Ghost Dad. That's right, Ghost Dad. Yeah, a movie which the father becomes a ghost after that accident that happened to him. Well, anyway. <laughs> it stars Bill Cosby with Kimberly Russell, Salem Grant, Denise Nicholas, Ann Bannon, Christine Alpensall, who went on to do TV shows such as Saturday Night Live, and wants to be in the movies like Mac and Me, and Richie Rich, My Girl 2, and Black Sheep, and the rest. Just recently, The Wolf of Wall Street. Omar Gooding, yeah, the cousin of Cuba Gooding Jr., wound up doing shows like Wild and Crazy Kids, as well as uh, Smart Guy, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, and all the rest. And Barry Colvin. And it's directed by Bill Cosby's friend, who's also an actor, legendary actor, and director and writer, Sidney Potier. The movie begins when a workaholic father, who's also a widower, named Elliot Hopper, played by Bill Cosby, was about to land a deal of a lifetime at work which he was hoping that he'll be able to win a promotion and a company's car after he forgets his daughter Diane's birthday. He attempts to make it up for her by promising that she could have his car when he secures the deal at work on the coming Thursday. Yes, that's right, because Thursday was the day where he finally gets his promotion after he closes his deal. But after being persuaded to give his car on his daughter's earlier. Elliot must hail a taxi from work, which was driven by Satanist Curtis Birch, who is played by Raynard Shrine. He drives erratically and speeds out, out of control, but in attempting to get the taxi to stop, Elliot announced that he is Satan, that's right, and commands him to stop the taxi, being shocked by his evil master. <laughs> Birch decided to drive off the bridge where he and Elliot had fallen to their deaths. But once Elliot had emerged from the accident scene, he, he tries to approach a police officer to, to learn what happened. After almost getting run over by a bus, which apparently he actually went straight to the bus, that's what happened, he just learned that he, he himself is a ghost. So that's where something went extremely wrong. So once he finally went back home, all the kids discovered that he was actually here, but they didn't even know it until they finally saw him. But once they turned on the light, that's when they discovered that he is indeed a ghost. So that's why he was trying to communicate with them to find out what really happened. That is until a paranormal researcher from London named Sir Edith, played by Ann Bannon, who tells them that he is a ghost and he has yet to enter the afterlife, that prior to his soul will not cross over until Thursday. Still, so things were going so wrong for the family that this was going to become more difficult to follow because at the same time, he decided to be part of, you know, part of his son's um, show and tell project at school, which at the same time he has a close a deal on Thursday, and he also discovers that his daughter was with his boyfriend. But it's even worse when his boss, with tons of the workers, decided to come to his doorstep trying to close the deal to see if this will work this the third time. And then, meanwhile, he, he's dealing with the, the girl next door, the neighbor who eventually becomes his love interest, Joan, who's played by Denise Nichols. Things just went completely downhill, and, and once he lost his job and his promotion, Edith came along to find out that his body was actually found, Elliot's body, 
until his daughter you know, winds up having an accident by slipping in onto the, the roller blades that were on the stairs. So they both went up in the hospital. And well, and guess what? She wants to become a ghost. Yeah, that was going on for a while. But that's when they finally discover his body, in which Elliot's already in a coma. So they're trying to save the idea was, I'll go back to my body until you go back to yours, his daughter. Once their bodies are back up, they finally recover. And then suddenly, Elliot winds up seeing Curtis Birch again. On the, just to give him his wallet back. Yeah. And that's how the movie went. But it was... I gotta say, you know... I didn't hate this movie as much. I mean, it had a lot of funny moments in this movie, but... Yeah, you gotta admit, the movie is pretty dull, even for a comedy. Yeah, and the movie just seems to go completely wrong as the film was going on. I know there was one joke in the film which, <laughs> you know, when Elliot discovered Sir Edith, you know, he wants up, you know, making a joke about his first name, saying, But Edith is a girl's name! He said, No, it isn't! Yeah, that, I gotta admit, that was pretty funny. But then there were other scenes that seemed to go on so long. I mean, even though it's only 83 minutes, that's how long it was. There was a lot of deleted scenes that I discovered online, which aired on USA a long time ago. Where, yes, once again, there, there was going to be yet more scenes where, you know, even before the beginning of the movie, which he knew he was going to get killed, he was either going to have an accident... Or, or not. Yeah, it keeps predicting every scene where you know something bad was going to happen to him until until he finally gets the taxi. It just doesn't make sense at all. But of course, there was one scene with Omar Gooding's character who wanted to bribe him to be, you know, because he wanted to be able to make more money prior to him being a ghost. You know, Elliot. And suddenly, you know, Elliot decided to attack him. Part of that, yeah. Elliot did the same thing with um, his daughter's boyfriend. Where he winds up <laughs> going straight to the phone and attacking him as well. Yeah. yeah, there were a lot of scenes too that seemed to go on. I thought the daughter uh, was played by Kimberly Russell. Well, despite how beautiful she was, I think she still is, too. I gotta admit, she was a bitch. I didn't like the way the daughter acts in this movie. This is just your typical spoiled daughter that you just can't stand. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And the boss was a jerk. Yes, that's right. The boss was a complete asshole. When he didn't get the job, and he gets fired you know, prior to his mistakes he's been making, it just doesn't make any sense. It, it's so stupid that this had to happen all at the same time. I'll tell you this. If the daughter didn't get the car earlier, though, none of this would have never happened. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what's wrong with the film. And a lot of things that went along with it. But on the other hand, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, I think I like this movie a lot better than Leonard Part 6. That's for sure. And I thought the special effects were pretty interesting, too. Since this was made in 1990, well, they filmed in 1989, and came out in 1990. You gotta admit, the special effects were a lot better back then compared to the special effects we see now in today's movies, where everything's all CGI and everything. Now, you can tell that they used some camera work as well as editing and all these movements that they put in, but I think they did use some computers in some of those scenes. But other than that, though, it's... Because it came out before the other film called Ghost, surprisingly enough, because it came out in the summer of 1990. But at least Ghost was a better film than Ghost Dad, seeing that it's a comedy. Now, during on a perfect day, like, if, if you have nothing else to do, I'd say Ghost Dad is, is pretty much for you anyway. It's not the best movie ever made, because it's not the kind of film I would recommend. It's not perfect, 
but that's alright. So anyway, I give Ghost Dad two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.